Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharti and we are here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us once again, Lucas Gently, CEO and co-founder of Loft Labs. Lucas, it's good to have you back on the show. Yeah, good to be here live with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And of course, there are a lot of announcements that you folks made. So we are going to talk about the big ones and the small ones. But before we go there, just quickly remind our viewers, what is Loft Lab all about? And because you folks, you know, you're in the booth, a lot of traffic is there, which means that you are doing something right. So we also want to understand, what are you doing right? Yeah, I think part of it is uh, building a, a open source kind of motion, open source community, right? Getting that excitement uh, around what we're doing on the on the technology level, uh, and I think that's one of the things I really love about KubeCon. Right, uh, this is not a you know buyers conference, right, or strictly kind of like business oriented. There's just a ton of practitioners here, and people that have hands-on experience with our technologies, like V Cluster. Right, they come up to us and say like, Hey, I've been already doing this. I put you in here, and now I'm exploring this new thing and uh, I kind of want to get your take on it, right? And that's the kind of conversations I, I love having here. And I think uh, I think we're good at having them. I think uh, you know our booth is there's obviously salespeople there too, and you know and marketers and go to market folks, but we also just have like you know engineering focused folks in there, and like I'm having a lot of these conversations as well, uh, and that's always just great. If I ask you to extract the meaning of Loft Lab, the value, what is Loft Lab? Yeah, I think. We're really targeted towards uh, the platform engineers, folks that want to hand out Kubernetes at scale within an organization uh, in a self-service fashion, uh, ideally. And we help them set the guardrails in place and find the golden paths for people, make sure when they hand out uh, you know, hundreds or even thousands of Kubernetes clusters that they do it in an efficient way. Um, and I think it's these kind of uh, optimizations that we're working on. Obviously, uh, at the core of all of it is vCluster for you know our virtual Kubernetes technology. We are here at KubeCon, and you have been at a couple of KubeCons. Your booth size is also keeps you know <laughs> growing. The company is also growing. So quickly talk about the growth of company with the growth of evolution of ecosystem. Yeah, it's exciting to see. I mean, you know, the first uh, KubeCon I was at was uh, pre-COVID, right? Um, and then COVID hit, obviously, and, and KubeCon was very heavily downsized, right? I remember giving the first talk, the first talk ever about vCluster at a KubeCon uh, was in LA uh, in 2021. You know, things had just opened up after the pandemic. Uh, international travel was not permitted yet. Um, and that conference was tiny. There was like maybe two and a half thousand people there. Uh, probably like 80% were uh, cloud native vendors like us. Um, obviously, the talk was streamed, uh, so a whole bunch of folks have seen it. But yeah, I think we've seen like KubeCon revitalized from there, right? Valencia was was great. Paris the, earlier this year was amazing, right? Chicago last year, quite a bit bigger, bigger than Detroit the year before, and definitely much bigger than LA. And you know, we we started in 2021 with open sourcing vCluster in in early 21, and I think the same time as KubeCon you know, was reset and like resurfaced and like grew pretty exponentially. Uh, we've, we've grown pretty similarly. Um, yeah, we, we actually just celebrated 50 employees. Um, so that, that was a big milestone for us that we just hit this week. Uh, yeah, very exciting to, to see the team grow. I think we grew like uh, about 2x or so in, in the past like nine to 10 months uh, of this year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. The team comes together uh, and obviously we're a remote first company. So KubeCon is always a great excuse for us to really meet in person, not just with our users, but also within our team. So KubeCon is where you have team meetings in person. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, everybody loves it, right? It's like, that's, that's home for everybody in a way, right? And you walk across here and you meet so many people that you've, you've got to know over the years, right? Um, there's like this, you know, annual or biannual tradition of like, hey, you know, let's just catch up at KubeCon. And uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity for us every time. I also am kind of curious of what kind of announcement you folks made here. Yeah, I think the big one is the launch of uh, vCluster Cloud. Uh, it's in beta right now. Um, we're working towards making it uh, much more of a mission critical, stable solution. But right now it's a great way to, you know, we have vCluster and then obviously the pro features on top of the, the core technology. Um, but then we also have these platform features and that requires that you install the vCluster platform, which uh, you know, is, is a component that you obviously 
running UV clusters is something that most companies want to do. Running the platform is is a different story, though, right? Um, and that's a little bit of a you know hurdle to get started with potentially, right? You spun up a couple of V clusters. Now you're seeing these platform features like our sleep mode that puts virtual clusters to sleep automatically. You're like, hey, let me try this out. Um, and then we ask you, hey, to install the platform, and you know you gotta uh, have an ingress to expose it, right? It has a UI component to it. Um, you may need to open up uh, a firewall, uh, right? And we just take away that burden by hosting our platform for you. So you have a couple of V clusters running and you want to upgrade them to pro V clusters. You want to see what the platform can do. You can just go to vcluster.cloud, create an account, spin it up and like, you know, it takes like maybe 30 seconds, right? Uh, and then you're in, you connect your three or four V clusters and you're ready to go. So for that initial exploration and experimentation with the product, uh, this is going to make it so much faster for new users to discover things. But also for existing users, you know, we ship so many updates, so many new features. Um, when when people are on a certain version, they're like, oh, can I hold off on this upgrade for like a couple of weeks? Or do I need this immediately? Let me check out the new version, right? vCluster Cloud is a great way to do this now. So when we look at vCluster, vCluster Pro, and vCluster Pl Cloud, uh, so is it like, you know, evolution? Is it like where you're running? So j j I just want to understand the differences, similarities, and how they complement each other. Yeah, absolutely. So we see the core features, right? Uh, the core is really what's open source, right? That's what you find on GitHub. That's all the core functionality to spin up a virtual cluster. And then we have these pro features. So, you know, for example, backing stores that are more resilient, uh, the more high performant uh, networking, um, you know, and a lot of features uh, around like peace of mind and stability. Um, that's what we call pro features. That essentially makes your V cluster better. And then we have the platform features. The platform features are things that you need when you have a fleet of virtual clusters and you want to orchestrate that fleet, right? Uh, and you want to optimize things across a lot of virtual clusters. You know, if you have three virtual clusters running, it's not important to turn them off automatically. But when you have like 100 or 200 or 1,000 virtual clusters running, you kind of want to automatically turn the ones off that are not currently used. And that's what our platform does with the sleep mode, for example. So it's a pretty natural evolution that you find vCluster core, you start exploring these core features, you're excited, you come across a pro feature in the doc, uh, in the documentation, you want to upgrade, um, and then a couple months later, you may have 50 virtual clusters running, and then you're thinking about these optimizations and more of the fleet management aspect. And that's where really the platform comes in. And ultimately, vCluster Cloud um, is the hosted version, right? The SaaS variant of uh, you know, vCluster platform. And is vCluster pl uh, Cloud uh, uh, targeting a specific cloud out there? Public cloud, we can talk about. We can talk about private cloud. We can also talk about data center or all of above. Yeah. So. Um, you connect your own V clusters wherever they run, right? So you can even run them in Docker desktop on your local machine, right? Um, no cloud account required for it. Um, but obviously, you can also run that in, you know, on an OpenShift cluster on EKS or something like that, right? Uh, we're pretty flexible. As long as you spin up a V cluster, you can connect it to the to the cloud. Excellent, thank you. Now, any other announcement that you folks made here at the show? Yeah, there's another announcement we recently made, uh, and that's a KubeWord integration. Uh, so KubeWord uh, seems to get a lot of traction, you know, for the pretty obvious reasons with the whole, you know, VMware kind of like, you know, drama. Um, and I think it's it, it's really interesting to see that interest in this project that allows you to spin up VMs through Kubernetes APIs, right? Obviously, Kubernetes APIs is what we do all day long. That vCluster ultimately delivers Kubernetes APIs to you know hundreds and thousands of people in uh, in these in these Fortune 500 companies. Um, so it's pretty natural that people are looking for ways to integrate VM provisioning into that flow. So we built this KubeWord integration, which ultimately allows you to have a V cluster and then spin up virtual machines inside of that V cluster to also consume them. Uh, it's really, really exciting and a very, very smooth experience for, for folks that want to have these legacy type workloads or just need the VM uh, because they need deeper access you know, to, uh, to the machine, right? Uh, for privileged containers or image building or whatever they're doing in, in those VMs. When we look at Kubernetes from the early days, you know, it was stateless workloads, then stateful workloads, then even folks are running on edge, you know. So it's the same story that we saw with Linux kernel, 
you know right. Linus created I, I talked to him again like uh, at the open source summit recently the the reason he created but the way it's been used is beyond how have you seen the evolution of Kubernetes itself from the original idea to where it is being used and how love is kind of addressing all those use cases yeah it's pretty interesting I think Kubernetes you know is so much more than just containers uh, and I think people are realizing that now right there's obviously great projects uh, like Crossplane, for example, right, that use Kubernetes API to provision cloud resources, right? Um, and we're kind of seeing Kubernetes and CRDs and the controller pattern, right, um, emerge as this thing that that is much, much broader even than, than container workloads. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing people now use vCluster for cluster sharding, for example, which is something, you know, we, we couldn't even imagine when we got started, right? Uh, so, so it's pretty crazy where, where people put you. I think the uh, one of the use cases I'm, I'm particularly excited about as well is, uh, you know, the whole CI environment use case, ephemeral environments in, in CI, uh, preview environments in CI. And, um, you know, if you were to think about spinning an entire Kubernetes cluster, like an EKS cluster up for every CI run, it's going to take like 30, 40 minutes to spin that up, right? So. That's not even possible with traditional Kubernetes versus with vCluster, it suddenly becomes possible, right? So I think I see part of what we're doing as an extension of what you just described, right? Kubernetes becomes broader and broader, and with vCluster, it can become even broader than it is today. And uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting. It's like you say, you know, it's like Linux, it's like ubiquitous. And you know, I sometimes refer to you know, the multi-tenancy story as well. When when people say, you know, when they sometimes hear of vCluster initially, they're like, doesn't Kubernetes have RBAC and users and namespaces? Like, isn't it possible to share a Kubernetes cluster? And I'm like, well, Linux has users and permissions and folders, right? But like, if you tried sharing a Linux server without VMs, right? It's really hard, right? Um, and I think that's why EC2 and like, you know, obviously all the cloud providers that are effectively selling you VMs, right? Uh, rather than physical machines is, is so attractive because uh, that's a clean way to share, you know, infrastructure um, without, you know, uh, having to share it within Linux directly, right? So the virtualization layer is, is pretty important. And I think that's the that's really our contribution to uh, to Kubernetes itself. I'll go back to vCluster, you know, but you have a lot of other open source projects and then you have commercial version. Uh, can you talk about those and how those do, they, all of them fit into the vision that you have in Loft? And if I can also, you did touch upon in the very beginning, the vision, how do those product uh, or projects uh, fit into that vision? For us, it's really um, supporting these platform engineers, right? Um, whether that's a production platform or you're building a, uh, you know, internal developer platform, right? Whatever you're currently working on as a platform engineer, we want to be, uh, you know, delivering these building blocks that get you to build your platform faster, to make your platform more resilient, more optimized, right? Because um, when you think about a lot of these platform teams, they have so much responsibility, right? They need to balance on the one hand side, you know, standardization, but on the other side, they need to, uh, you know, also give people autonomy and they need to make sure that people, you know, can can move fast in these organizations uh, and that they're not slowed down by, by that platform, right? So it's a lot of like really, you know, difficult and, and sometimes even conflicting things that they need to balance. Um, and you know, we hope to deliver these building blocks like uh, vCluster or like DevPod that, you know, platform teams can build on top of. Uh, and we know, you know, we, we're not going to promise you the, the platform itself. I, I, don't, I, I strongly believe that a lot of companies are different and there, there's such a big ecosystem of tools and processes, right, and languages and IDEs, right, um, that there can't be like one platform for everyone. Right. So every company in a way has to define what is the platform for them. And we can be, a, you know, a couple of building blocks on, on the road to that platform that really gets you the, uh, that edge of, of, you know, performance and developer experience. Right. Uh, so that's the that's the contribution we want to drive. And as you mentioned DevPod as well. Talk about what kind of journey you are planning for DevPod as well. Yeah, DevPod is a very exciting project. We launched it, uh, you know, last year. It's, uh, you know, not. I think it's not even a year and a half old at this point. Um, 
it just kind of blew up. We put it on Hacker News, right? People got really excited. And uh, yeah, we didn't expect the reaction to be, you know, so quick. It was even quicker than vCluster, to be honest. Um, and I think it's, it's fascinating to see it grow. We're now in private beta for, uh, you know, the commercial offering. Uh, we have a couple of early customers uh, on the platform. Um, it's, it's very exciting to, to see it. Yeah, I can't wait to open it up more to the world. Um, but that's a topic for next year. Every year you folks keep coming up with a new project and product. Just tease your audience, your customer, what else to expect from Loft. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, things coming out on, on the vCluster side. Uh, on the DevPod side as well, I think for, um, for vCluster in particular, we're seeing vCluster just become more ubiquitous than ever. One of the things that we realized is, you know, managing a virtual cluster needs to be as easy as possible, right? You got to have that peace of mind that you can just spin up a V cluster and it is running, it is resilient, right? Uh, and then you're going to start putting it in more and more places. So one of the things that I'm particularly very excited about is putting the state of a virtual cluster into an external database. Because right now, you know, when you, when you spin up a V cluster, uh, it, it's using SQLite by default and then it can use etcd, whether it's embedded etcd or an externally running etcd cluster. Um, but, you know, SQLite is an embedded database, so there's, there's definitely some limits. It's a single file database, right? So you can scale that up very, very much, right? Uh, etcd, obviously, much more scalable, but also had a lot more work, right? Um, so it's really nice to say, hey, I put my data into a MySQL or Postgres database because we've done that for years and years and years, right? Companies have very resilient ways to run a SQL database at scale. Back it up, snapshot it, roll it back, right? Do schema migrations, right? There's so many things. So if you are putting this into like an RDS in AWS, you can have it globally distributed, completely high available, backed up, right? Um, not a lot of things can go wrong with that. And having that as the backend for vCluster is really exciting. That's something we, sh we shipped earlier this year. And uh, we now, uh, actually just with this release uh, to, uh, yesterday, we announced that you can now also connect it, uh, your RDS server to the platform and it will provision databases for each vCluster you spin up uh, with limited credentials, very secure. It cleans up the databases if you would like it uh, to do that. And you know, for us, we really just want to take out the friction of running a virtual cluster for mission critical workloads. Uh, so we're investing a lot in that area right now. Lucas, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. And as usual, I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Awesome. Good to see you here at KubeCon again.